Hello, and welcome to Old Scary World. Today we're going to be looking at this news article from interestingengineering.com, and it's a article titled, Researchers Revealed the Secret of Self-Healing Roman Concrete. So, in the community of mud flood and Tartaria Old World, the term Roman concrete often comes up, and it's kind of a way to explain the resiliency and the durability and so on and so forth of the types of materials that were used to construct the old world and the old world buildings, the Roman buildings, the buildings of other so-called civilizations here on this realm. And the term Roman concrete comes up a lot and those who know know kind of thing. Well, today supposedly for the first time here, January 9th, the story broke that engineers, scientists have discovered the secret, and there's multiple articles. You can search, there's all kinds of different articles, and they're put together a little bit different, but the gist is all the same, which is this Roman concrete, self-healing, all this stuff, and let's just say right now it's kind of funny how they chose this photo here of all the you know great buildings that they could have used but regardless they use this building here this uh and they say ancient roman concrete now why exactly it gets the term roman when it was obviously used in other civilizations i guess because rome and the roman culture has some type of you know uh credibility or validity attached to it because of you know the Romans and all that Roman Empire so I'm not going to read it all verbatim I mean I could but it says even after using all the latest construction technology our modern day skyscrapers and structures are expected to last only 50 to 100 years after this period they are not safe for use and are generally demolished by the authorities for example the world's tallest scraper skyscraper in the early 20th century the singer building was built in 1908 and after 60 years it was just de demolished Burgi kilophilia's Kil design is also believed to last for about 100 years however we're not saying 100 years is the exact expiry date of buildings many structures including the kilophilia tower could have last beyond this time the fact is that 50 to 100 years is the estimated and expected lifetime of modern buildings according to construction experts so according to experts it's normal for a building to only last 50 to 100 years so then how come ancient roman structures like the maison Caeo temple 2021 years old the Colosseum, 1000 951 years old and the Pantheon 1898 years old are still standing in front of our eyes unlike unlike most modern day structures these buildings have been in the middle of battles storms earthquakes world wars and many other disastrous events the Romans didn't have any high-tech construction machines or technologies then how did they then how did they create oh, there's a typo here then how they create oh how they created ancient marvels that survived for so long well a team of international researchers has the answer to this question they claim that the romans somehow figured out the recipe to make the world's strongest and most durable concrete the exact recipe could now help us construct long-lasting sustainable buildings okay so i'm just going to stop there for a second and uh and just kind of throw in a little theory here Okay, first of all, they claim that the Romans somehow figured out the recipe to make the world's strongest and most durable concrete. Now, now think about that sentence. They claim, meaning the researchers, that the Romans somehow figured out the recipe. Okay, that's silly because they don't know how they did it so they just say that they figured it out somehow the exact recipe could now help us 
meaning the current timeline civilization. But they say us because they're trying to include you into the plan here. Construct long-lasting, sustainable buildings. Okay. Now, what that tells me is they're going to start knocking stuff down. They're going to start knocking stuff down and building new stuff to last another reset, just like the other stuff. You see? So they get rid of the old, bring in the new stuff that's going to last, okay? Because they didn't want to use it on the previous generations. Because there was that period after the reset where they didn't use it anymore. Okay. Okay, continuing. A concrete ingredient was ignored. The study from MIT is not the only research work that attempts to understand the composition of the concrete used by the Romans. Scientists in the past have discovered that the ancient Romans used to add volcanic ash to their construction material. The fine ash, also known as Piazzolac, Pozandolanic, was an important ingredient that was also found in Naples' Piazzo region. Romans used to transport the ash from Piazzo to the construction sites and add it to the concrete. However, according to the researchers, the Posianic material isn't the only thing contributing to the long-lasting nature of ancient Roman structures. The concrete also featured unusual white chunks that many previous researchers considered as marks that may have been left due to poor mixing of concrete. Okay, so what they're trying to say is they used to just cope and just say, oh, it was actually a bad design, but it couldn't have been a bad, well, poor mixing. So, in other words, to say that they it was so good they didn't even have to mix it, right? So that was their cope, just, oh, it was a bad mixing uh, technique. This sounds logical at first because concrete is generally prepared by mixing limestone, water, gravel, and various other materials. Nowadays, we have machines to ensure the proper mixing of these materials, but ancient Romans didn't have access to such machines. So maybe this is why the concrete samples from that time contained the white chunks. It turns out this was not the case. One of the study authors and professor at MIT, Admir Masek, said of the news release, quote, the idea that the presence of these land class was simply attributed to low quality control always bothered me. If the Romans put out put so much effort into making outstanding construction material, why would they put so little effort into ensuring the production of a well-mixed final product? There has to be more to the story. Okay, that makes perfect sense. The the bad mixing technique, I mean, that's 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 horrible. That's 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 lazy. That's almost like suspiciously lazy. Okay, so then it shows lime class, the strength of Roman concrete. So then it shows that these little chunks are actually the strength. Okay, so it was actually an ingredient that they used in the concrete on purpose to strengthen it. The current study reveals that those white chunks represent lime casts, a special material composed of calcium oxide or quick lime. It is highly reactive and dry. It was mixed with other materials at probably very high temperatures. The researchers suggest that Apart from the volcanic ash is the lime class and the hot mixing process that made the Roman concrete so durable. The effects of hot mixing are twofold. First, when the overall concrete is heated to high temperatures, it allows chemis excuse me, it allows chemistries that are not possible if you only use slacked lime, producing high temperature associated compounds that would not otherwise form. Second, this increased temperature significantly Second, this increased temperature significantly reduces curing. Man, this thing's all full of typos. And setting times, since all the reactions are accelerated, allowing for much faster construction, said Professor Masek. The authors examined the chemical composition and nanostructure of the ancient Roman concrete samples and discovered that the lime class gave concrete the ability to self-heal. Now, okay, I'm going to pause and get, stop for a second here again. Self-heal. Now, we have to assume that there's a little bit of symbology in that, a little bit of uh, 
Okay, a little bit of metaphor in that a cell field. Now we've heard about in the old world how things are able to reemerge and come back to life, resurrection. Okay, so these buildings were healing. So we talk about the, the resonant frequencies with the bells and what the churches and the citadels and the basilicas and the temples were originally used for. It's for healing frequencies. Okay, so there was some residents with these uh, Roman concrete, the line class, uh, the frequency vibrations, and the, the buildings were a living thing, essentially. They were, they were healing themselves from the stress of this realm. I could go even deeper on a like metaphysical kind of supernatural kick, but I'm not going to do that right now. But let's just, you know, keep that in the back for now. And we can pontificate on that later. Whenever a crack is formed, the white chunks react with water, causing the recrystallization of calcium carbonate and eventually the closing of the crack. That's true, but mixed with the frequencies. I think that the frequencies have uh, a part in that. Okay, and then there you have this other video about concrete. Okay, the researchers even demonstrated this mechanism using Hox mixed concrete samples prepared using the Roman method and the modern method. They cracked up samples and poured water on the cracks. After two weeks, the cracks of the Roman concrete were gone, but concrete prepared with the modern approach couldn't heal itself. The modern world can't heal itself. Shocker. Whether the damage occurs within years of construction or centuries thereafter, so long as the Lyme class remain, these self-healing functionalities can persist, the authors note in their study. Roman concrete is stronger and better. Apart from being durable, self-healing, and self-healing, the concrete containing Lyme class is also more sustainable and eco-friendlier. The authors suggest that if we start using Roman concrete, we can reduce our carbon footprint by up to 8%. Okay, so you see, once again, it's with this um, carbon footprint thing. If we, if we start using, we can, we can do it. Okay, Professor Masick and his team aim to bring Roman concrete, like modified self-healing concrete, into the market. They also want to test their version of durable concrete and 3D printing based construction. Okay, see. Uh, I'm just reading this blind, you guys. I I, I didn't pre-read this because I wanted to have a genuine reaction to the information. But I'm just seeing all kinds of red flags here. Now we're talking about 3D printing. Okay, now where have we heard that before in this community and other research communities about the, the, the true history of civilization? You know, did, did they have 3D printing, a form of 3D printing in the past to make some of these columns and facades and sculptures okay so we're just you see where this is going okay the study was published by the journal of science advances and then there's an abstract i'll just read the abstract really quick ancient roman concretes have survived millennia but mechanicalistic insights into their durability remain an enigma here we use a multi-scale collaborative elemental and chemical mapping approach to investigate Relict lime cast, ubiquitous and conspicuous mineral component associated with ancient Roman mortars. Together, these analyses provide new insight into mortar preparation methodologies and provide evidence that the Romans employed hot mixing using quick lime in conjunction with or instead of slack lime to create an environment where High surface area aggregate scale lime class are retained within the mortar matrix. Inspired by these findings, we propose that these microscopic inclusions might serve as critical sources of reactive calcium for long term poor and crack filling or post posionic reactivity within the cementitious constructs. The subsequent development and testing of modern lime class containing Cementious mixtures demonstrate their self-healing potential, thus paving the way for the development of more durable, resilient, and sustainable concrete formulations. 
Okay, well, there you have it. I know I made a few mistakes with some of the pronunciations and everything, but I'm trying to do this in one take and I don't want to like stutter over myself and everything. So I was trying to read it a little too fast probably, but that's the way it goes. So we can just go back up here a little bit and just in case I missed anything, but basically what I'm, yeah, what I'm seeing here is what they're saying. This stuff reacts with it and it's able to, to heal itself. And that's why these buildings have lasted so long, you know, but they're, they're missing something there. There's other ingredients and um, there's other theories about what the magic ingredients were. And some people say it demanded a, I, I gotta be careful what I say, you know, a ritual, let's say that it, it needed a precious ingredient that could only be obtained from, um, from uh, sacrificial means, a certain red substance. Um, yeah, so I mean, there you have it. Um, I didn't even really think that the video was gonna be that long. I just, uh, I've never really done a, like a breaking news kind of thing, and this is kind of a big deal to me, at least kind of funny, the timing. So there you have it, Roman concrete. Um, and like I said, this story is like, it's all over the place. It's like all in the normie news and stuff. So if you just search Roman Concrete News, um, you can find all kinds of articles, uh, different information, but this is the gist of it. So anyways, I just want to share that with you guys. And as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye.